Hey, hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again for another one of the Sunday A to Z's in Christian Rock. Uh, by now, we're up to T's. By now, hopefully you've seen one of these before, but for those who maybe stumbled across this and who haven't, what we're doing basically is we're looking at records in, vinyl records in my collection that would be more or less either loosely or heavily categorized as being of the Christian Rock genre. So there are some gray areas which we cover bands that are maybe dipping their toes in that water but not necessarily marketed that way or blatantly speaking that way so that's a bunch of everything and we are sticking with rock hard rock bands only dipping into the lighter rock at times when they're some of my favorites but there's a lot of classic rock early rock aor uh, pop rock new wave stuff like that there's a lot of bands like that in my collection that i'm not covering i'm strictly sticking with the heavier edgier stuff maybe i'll go back and do something on the other side for the people who are into that kind of music but at this point we're sticking with the things that are a little more on the metallic side hard rock and above so let's get right into this we are up to t's i'm going to try to blow through all the t's there's quite a few of them but not as many as we have with the s's Coming up first is Tamplin. Ken Tamplin I mentioned back in the S's when we talked about Shout. He was a singer for Shout. He went solo, did st stuff under the band name Tamplin. Um, he's done a couple of their own vinyl. Uh, this one, both of these are really great, but this one was is a really good, sticks, in, sticks out as being one of the really good ones I remember uh, that I loved back in the day. So he's done a lot, just a phenomenal singer. And he's done a lot. I mentioned him. He's done a lot of stuff. He was in Joshua. He's done a lot of producing. He's done a lot of background singing. He's got a distinctive voice, so I can usually pick him out when it comes to I hear him in the background. I'm like, hey, that's him. And uh, yeah, so he and he teaches online courses now. It teaches you how to sing multi octave vocal range. But anyway, this was one of I think I think this was like his first solo. I mean, it was Ken Tamplin with friends or Tamplin and friends. And it has some instrumental stuff. It has, you know, some, some killer stuff on here. Um, but this was like sort of like his brain, uh, breaking out into his own thing, his own band type stuff. And this is what started it early in the day. So only, only three of his solo album type stuff uh, is available currently on vinyl. All right, up next, Tempest, A Coming Storm. So Tempest, uh, Indiana Band. I love this album back in the day. A lot of people do not like the album. Production's not great. The songs are simple. Uh, there's all kinds of critique about it. But for some reason, it really hit me in a place that I really enjoyed this album. Um, I don't have that. They had a second album. I don't have that second album on vinyl. I don't know why. I just haven't. Um, met him a couple times. Saw Tempest in concert. They, they came to Florida, and I drove over and spent some time with them over there. They were staying in the house for an extended period and doing some recording with somebody in Florida. Uh, anyway, so yeah, they were on the cover of my first issue of the Pendragon magazine, and then I have a picture of Jamie, JR, holding that cover later when I did meet up with them in Florida. So anyway, they were near and dear to my heart in in, in the days, and I'm, I just still, I think this album has a connection with me that I really love. Long story short, also, if you don't know, JR, singer for this band, eventually did go on to be the singer from Fire and Love and, Abil and Beyond with Guardian, and he went to buy the moniker Jamie Rowe. So yeah, this is where Jamie got his start. Anyway, cool stuff. I do need to track down their second album. All right, moving on. Terraphobia Rise. I showed this not too many months ago because I got it recently. Um, death metal band. Uh, where are they from? Australia or someplace overseas. Um, death metal, just straight up death metal bands. One of the bands that I kind of uh, got into a little, and so I bought, that's their newest album, and I got this one, Rocks Records put this up. This is Evolution, and uh, it came with the CD and everything, so this is what hooked me onto them. There is another album out there uh, that I don't have, but it's not on vinyl. These are the only two I believe on vinyl, and I was able to pick those up. Death metal, extreme metal, not much different than this. Testimony of Apocalypse. I mentioned these guys in the S's because of Sacrament. This is the Sacrament was back in the late 80s, early 90s, and then this is kind of the return. A couple of the guys got together and they did this. This first Sacrament album is called Testimony of Apocalypse, so the uh, band went with that because it was a singer from that album, and they went with that. So, again, Extreme Metal uh, of the day. They've got some guest singers and stuff on some of these, and so at times some are rougher, some are lighter, and then their sec uh, that is, that's their second album. The first album, uh, None Escape the Judgment, is the one where they hit us with the first album with the original singer from the Sacrament days. So 
great stuff you know definitely more on the heavier side growling stuff um, and then we move into Theocracy Mosaic. This is our most recent album. Theocracy, uh, Georgia Band, U.S. Power Metal, soaring high vocals, shredding guitars, lots of cool drumming, um, just straight up great melodic power metal um, all over the place. So um, that's their most recent album. And I, I believe I believe all their albums are on vinyl. Go ship because they had went back and went some of them. Um, and they pressed various ones in different colors, and I believe, I believe, I believe they're all out there. So this is going way back, and, and this is their first album. And you may have seen, I do I still have that shirt? I've probably worn my Theocracy shirt. I bought a Theocracy shirt when this album came out in like 95. <clears throat> I was so impressed with it, I ordered one of their t-shirts, and I still to this day wear it, I believe. So um, it's from this era. So great stuff. All right, moving on. Thousand Foot Crutch, or as people know them, TFK. Now this is, uh, it's you know, people say, well, that's not really, you know, what it is. These guys are pretty heavy. The um, first album these guys put out was Rap Rock. The singer, you know, rapping, and the music was funky, but hard, hard and heavy. Second album is where I discovered them, actually. Went to the Christian bookstore, and they had demos of stuff you could just... On the screen, you put the headphones on, you can play some of the latest tracks. And I was blown away when I heard the Phenomenon album. <clears throat> I bought it. I bought some other bands uh, that were out there, Pillar and stuff like that, that same day, the, or around that same time. There was just a lot of... Oh, Skillet. I bought Skillet the first time. I bought TFK and Skillet at the same time. They just blew me away, and I have loved them ever since. They became less rappy. Uh, a little bit spoken word here and there, but for the most part, not like that the second and beyond changed and they got you know heavy chunking guitars and stuff um but they are you know they're not heavy metal but they're they're hard rock i mean my daughter's one of her, her favorite bands as far as i know this is the only album uh the end is where it begins is the only album on vinyl and it's limited and i've had people offer me decent amount of bucks for it because they really want it because it's hard to find um, and it's actually the full album and then the second album is remixes of that album so it's interesting they put all that together because it seems like every tfk album that comes out there's followed shortly after with a remix of the album and you know i know my family doesn't like remixes but when they released this on vinyl they put out the whole album and the, and the remixes that had followed so cool stuff I'm a big TFK fan. I don't believe they're very active. They've done some. They've been reissuing some of their songs recently, where they've been bringing in mainstream singers and doing collabs with them. But it's songs from previous albums, and they've had bands that are not of the Christian realm that are just mainstream, and they've been singing and adding to that. So, anyway, moving on. Thresher. Here I am. Thresher. <sighs> Pennsylvania band, I believe, started off as Lazarus, loved, loved, loved the Lazarus uh, cassette back in the day. Then a couple of the guys went on to do Thresher and became thrashy. Uh, Lazarus was more just straightforward metal, hard rock. And then they went on, same singer and everything, went on to do Thresher and became thrashier. Now this is their second album, which never existed back in the day. Um, it never I'd never heard of it. And then when the resurgence came, they started putting their stuff out on vinyl and CD. They finally got these tracks reissued. So it was great after all these years. Those are recorded, I'm sure, you know, back in the 90s. This was the album we had back in the day, Totally Possessed. Love this album. Just straight up thrash. Uh, you know, clean thrash. The vocals are clean. But musically, it's, 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 it's that, you know, American thrashy sound. So Thresher, great stuff. Pretty sure that those are two. Those two are gone now, but you know, absolutely great releases back in the day. All right, the next one we're going to blow through these real quick. Everybody knows Tourniquet. I think I've shown them a thousand times. Um, Ted, the main leader behind Tourniquet, the drummer phenomenon, um, passed away a couple years ago, and he now the stuff is up in the air as far as there was a new album in the works after this one, and there have been tracks that I've heard online that are pretty much done. So I don't know how far along he was in the new album before he unexpectedly passed, but would love to see those reissued at some point by his family. Um, Gaze of Medusa, Medusa was his last album. It's got Tim Ripper Owens on here. It's got some other guests on here. He's done that a lot in the last couple albums. We've had a lot of different guests. They have a singer, 
but the singer I don't know if they're separated by distance um, the singer that you know Luke has is on a lot of these albums but he's not extent he's not on all the tracks so uh, Ted had been getting a lot of other people even you know mainstream non-christian singers to get in and sing with him and so great stuff um, there's a gap there I guess this so we're jumping from yeah there's there's quite a gap between the newer stuff um, that's the newest one but yeah the ones just prior to this I guess have never been on vinyl either hmm this is jumping into back in the day when this was the first album with Luke the new singer Luke Easter joined on this album I thought there were more tourniquet I don't, why am I all of a sudden anyway great album slightly different style than what we hear in the beginning but anyway Prior to that, though, there were three three tourniquet albums with uh, the same lineup, same singer, and those, you know, that's the classic days, and he had a unique style, and then after he separated from the band, they went on with Luke Easter, and, you know, it changed styles a little bit, vocal styles and everything. So, Pathogenic Ocular Dissonance, I showed this not too long ago in Funny Titles, in my Funny Titles, but these three albums, to me, are just there's something about them that's just like near perfection the musicianship the vocals the songwriting absolutely three of my favorite albums uh, psychosurgery great great stuff and definitely psychosurgery the original reissue they've been reissued a couple of times they've been remastered a little bit stop the bleeding these are reissues of the original mix that one is and then this is the remastered edition that came out with upgraded artwork so love 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 tourniquet hope to see some more of their stuff the family release a lot more of their stuff and put stuff out on vinyl now the singer and guitar player from the first three albums the guitar player played on a couple other albums after that but for the first three albums um, you had this distinctive sound with the singer and the guitar player who was a secondary singer so the secondary guitars Gary on guitar he sang the harsher thrashier vocals and then Guy on vocals sang the more melodic. Well, those two guys have resurfaced in the past couple years under the band name Flood, which I've mentioned uh, when they came out. They just came out with a new album like a month ago, two months ago. And I just saw online the other day that both Flood albums are going to be on vinyl. Pre-sales go up uh, by the time this video posts. Pre-sales go up this week. So, yeah pre-sales for the two flood albums on vinyl excited excited great stuff they sound so much like early tourniquet um just because of the sound of the singer great stuff all right triton blood of kings triton is a band that came out in the 80s and the singer has such a sound like getty lee that you know it's it's crazy they did two great albums and then disappeared and then came back this is probably uh, three four years ago now four or five years ago if you go back on my i believe it was on my channel. Did I do it for the Heaven's Metal channel? But I did an extensive interview with, uh, you know, the singer from this band. And we did a track-by-track -track analysis and discuss discussion. And those were put out. That might not be on my channel. That might have been done for the magazine channel. But this is their latest album. And they got a new album coming out. Not under Triton, but same singer and everybody like that. So um, there's some new music coming out. Um, great stuff. This album was cool because it is it is the original singer and guitar player. But you have Eric Gillette, guitar player extraordinaire, <laughs> from um, Neil Morse's band on here. And then you have Jim Laverde from Baron Cross on bass on here. So that was really cool to see uh, them working together. And uh, I believe there is some new trading stuff in the works. But like I said, there's some other new project that's coming out that uh, will be related that I keep seeing posted. So coming out soon. So that was our newest album. This was their second on Silent Tiger. Uh, that came out back in the day. This is a reissue of the vinyl that came out a couple years ago. And then this is our first album, Celestial Messenger. Uh, this is an OG copy on Rex Records. I don't think, I don't think this was, this was reissued on CD, but I don't think they did a vinyl reissue of this. Um, absolutely just love this. I love this album the most of the three back in, the, well, of the two back in the day. This was one of my favorites um, for sure. I just, I, I had demos prior to this and just love this stuff. So yeah, great stuff. All right, and then the last band, last and not least, and this is gonna be one of the gray area bands because I know what they said and I know what they sound like and I don't know 
you know, anyway, mm. Legions of the Dead. So Triton banned from Cal, I think California, back in the day, in the 80s, straight up, you know, one of those underground metal bands, you'd probably, were they on Metal Blade or something? One of those bands. Um, they did a couple albums, as you can see. So they did this, Legions of the Dead, which, you know, sounds like a metal album. Too Late to Pray, you start thinking, hmm, okay, is it just a, one of those dark bands singing about something like that? And then their third album was King of Kings. There's a lot of lyrics on some of these albums that are very... I used to think they were just more like Trouble, because I say that because they have a slight doom element. But lyrically, they're singing about spiritual themes from a pro-religious Christian view. And then King of Kings is, was pretty blatant. This what you know, the first two albums came out, and then this came out a couple years later. I fell in love with this stuff. Yeah, Reborn 1996. So this was a handful of years later they got back into this. So absolute great stuff. And then, of course, a couple years ago they came out with Hereafter. So around the time that I heard this coming out, was coming out, I contacted the band on Facebook to ask them. I said, you know what? There's a lot of religious lyrics. What do you classify yourself? And the guy told me straight up, we've always been considered, we always consider ourselves a Christian band. We've always been, we always consider ourselves... Either he said a Christian band or definitely a pro-Christian band or they were a spiritual Christian band. And so, and like I say, I, the lyrics are, are, are pretty cool about that. The only thing that, you know, makes me wonder is when you see, you know, stuff like this. Maybe they were goofing around with the imagery. You got the 666 on a shirt. Maybe they were just doing the, the heavy metal imagery. I don't know. So that's why I put them in a gray area because, you know, musically they're great. Lyrically, I think they're great. I just don't know you know, exactly if they would be classified as that. Um, but absolutely great stuff. And these were all reissued recently, and so they, and they all look the same with the reissues, and they're beautiful. So there you go. That's it. There's the tease. Thanks for watching for that one. We'll get into the, I don't know. Yeah, I guess there's going to be some use. I'm going to have to, maybe I have to dip into some, some of the edgier, the lighter rock stuff for that. But we'll see. Great stuff. Thanks a lot for watching. Rock on and rock hard.